Two, three, four. Run up your engine! One of the more expensive repairs on modern cars are replacing your main computer if it goes bad. So today I'm going to show you how to prevent them from going bad in the first place. And this advice goes true not just for the main control one. This is the ECM, the engine control module. It came out of Toyota a million years ago. It also goes for any other computer module in your car. And in modern cars, many have more than 50 computer control modules in them. And don't even start to talk about something like a hybrid Corolla. But even old cars like my 94 Celica still have a handful of computer modules. You don't want them to go bad because, like any kind of computer, the modules in cars work on a 5 volt reference signal. They don't even work on 12 volts. They work on 5 volts, just like your phone. They need a clean supply of electrical voltage, no surges, no gaps. Realize most cars are 12 volt. Then they gotta be stepped down to run the five volt computers. You don't want any kind of voltage surge, electrical heating up from loose connections. Here's how to keep your computer modules from going bad. First of all, purchase the right vehicle that has a good computer system placed in the correct position. I'll give you an example. I've been working on cars 52 years. I've only ever changed computer modules on Toyotas twice in 52 years. Because they're built well, and they're positioned in the right place. Take this matrix. Where's the engine control module? Well, you go in a car, it's down here behind the kick panel, hiding up inside there. So, there it is, inside the car, safe from the elements. Now, in many American cars, years ago, they started moving the computers under the hood, where it gets hot and wet when it rains. I thought, why on earth are these knuckleheads doing this? One of the early proponents of putting the computers under the hood was Chrysler. And more than coincidental, if you ask me, they're the ones that often have computer failure and you gotta replace them. So why do these knuckleheads put the computers under the hood? Cause it's cheaper to make them that way. That's the only real reason. Look, if the computer is inside the car, the wires have to go all the way through to get to the ignition and the fuel system, right? So, there's longer wires. It costs more money to make them. You put them under the hood like Chrysler has and a lot of American manufacturers, the computers are closer to all the engine parts. But what a stupid idea. It gets really hot under there, humid in the summer. Dumb design. Now, of course, they attempt to hermetically seal them, so generally the computers last longer than the warranty period, but you're not gonna see those things like this Toyota that's going 26 years later with no problems because its computer's hiding inside the cabin where it's safe from the elements. They may be building them cheaper. They're not building them to last as long. Saves them money in wiring harness. Costs you a fortune. All the heat of the engine eventually breaks your computer down. Now, there is an advantage if you put it up higher because if they're lower, like many Japanese cars, if you get in flood water, it's going to destroy them. But really, if your car's getting water that high, it's generally good by car anyway. These things aren't submarines. The old Beetles, yeah, they floated. They said they did, so they were more like boats. They didn't have a lot of computers in them, though. <laughs> they didn't have any, really, the early ones. So it's better to keep your computer inside the vehicle where it's away from harm. And of course, with any car, stay away from flood water. Water and computers don't go together. I've seen people ruin computers in cars when they spilled a big gulp. And they spilled it maybe between the seats where some cars have computer modules that operate windows and radios and stuff. And of course that'll destroy the computer. Water and computers don't go together. Now the next thing to make your computer module last as long as possible is make sure your car battery is always in tip top shape. It takes a mechanic or an auto parts store one minute to check your battery. I use this Medtronic checker. It's fantastic. It was 900 bucks but what the heck. In the olden days in the 60s when I was a young mechanic it was no big deal if your battery was getting weak guys it's, that still starts the car. I don't care. It didn't do that much in those days. But let's say one of these machines says your battery is getting weak. Change it now. Don't wait. And here's why. You can get voltage surges if your battery's going bad and shorting out. The alternator can be charging too heavily. Try to fix the battery that's really low. You could even get internal shorts in the barrier that can feed through the system. And even something as dumb as a corroded battery terminal can cause problems. Because electricity has to flow smoothly. If it's going through a corroded connection, it's going to build up heat 
because of all the extra resistance. That can cause problems, and especially if around your computer, the wiring's getting corroded or loose, that can fry them. Now sure, the computers do have a fuse, but if you look, a lot of times it's like a five amp fuse. Five amp is a reasonable amount of power when you're dealing with only five volts and milliamps in this. Often, the computer will fry long before that fuse pops. Never, ever jumpstart your car backwards. You reverse the polarity, goodbye computers. Then it would definitely fry the computer before that fuse popped. I've seen that happen so many times. So many jump starts a battery backwards, goodbye computer. It's even worse than it used to be. 94 Salka, say you fried the computer. <laughs> You go to a junkyard, you get a used computer, put it in, away it goes. They were simple computers, but not so with the modern computers. Modern computers have to be programmed for your NSF system, for the key or the keyless remote. They have to be programmed with software. You change a computer in a modern car, you have to pay a mechanic like me to reprogram it. You can't do it yourself unless you have one of these. This is an excellent reprogrammer that I've been using. Use a printer interface, plugs into my laptop, then I have to go to that manufacturer's website and pay for the software and then this pass-through device will reprogram the computer in the car. Now you gotta know how to do it and it takes a reasonable amount of time. Main thing is though, this little baby works great. It's a $995 tool though. You're not gonna go out and buy one of these unless you're a mechanic. If you are a mechanic, these maxi flashes, hey, they're fantastic. For a regular do-it-yourself guys, you're gonna have to pay somebody to do this service. You don't wanna ruin a computer and have to spend a whole bunch of money. And as I said, being computers, these Electronic control modules, sometimes they're called PCM2, power chain control modules, the same thing. They need a very clean source of electricity. Say your alternator's starting to go out. Maybe the diodes are going, and it starts to blurt alternator and electricity through the system. It'll destroy these things too. Alternators themselves, very easy to test with the same machine. Have that tested when you have your battery tested. And if it's really bad, and your battery light's coming on, generally when the battery light comes on, that means the alternator's not charging the battery. It usually has nothing to do with the battery itself. When I was young, those lights used to say ALT for alternator. But for some reason unknown to me, they say battery now instead of alternator. It's kind of dumb, but if your alternator is going out, it can mess up the computer system. Fix it sooner than later. Don't wait until the car just finally doesn't run at all, because by then, you could have destroyed the computer. And if you do have to replace the battery in your car, by all means, get one of these battery saver memory devices. They just plug in the OBD port, and you hook these ends up to a 12 volt battery. That keeps the memory alive in the vehicle. Cars today are so sophisticated, if you just replace the battery and you don't have a memory saver, the computer will go back to its original setting and many things won't work right. You got those electric little door parts that will open and close your doors. They might not work. I've seen cars where the sunroof won't work. Then you gotta pay a mechanic to reprogram stuff. If you got one of those security radios, the radio won't work and you have to have a security code. And if you don't have that security code anymore, your radio is not gonna work. These little memory savers, this one I got on Amazon, I think it was $12. They hardly cost anything. They fit all cars from 1996 up. So you might as well as get one. So if you have to replace a battery, you not have to deal with all that memory resetting. It'll stay exactly the way it was before you replace the battery. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Mo Man says, Scotty, what do you think about the Ford Taurus? Okay, I think lots of things about the Ford Taurus. Realize they made those things for a long time. They stopped making them because they had a lot of problems. Then the years later, they started making them again. So there's so many different ones out there. If you get one that has the V6 engine and a normal transmission in it, they could have been decent cars. But the ones that had CVT transmissions had problems and they were very slow. So it fits such a long years. It's hard to say anything definitive about the Ford Taurus because they've made so many different models and the older ones did have a bunch of problems then the newer ones didn't but there's a whole range of things with the Tauruses. It's kind of like more of a brand alone of itself in cars because they made so many different ones. <laughs> But they don't make them anymore. You know, they stopped production of them. So it's not that they were the greatest cars in the world. They were okay. And if you could get a used one cheap and it still works, go right ahead. But, you know, I wouldn't buy the last year model they made. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.